Hey all you YouTubers, we're out here in the barn today and we're going to talk about my favorite bits. So hang tight, we'll be right back with the rest of the discussion. Well, since we're all cooped up in the house, not really having much to do, um, everybody's been posting their My Favorite Bits videos to talk about their bits, and I tried doing one on my phone and posting it, but I ran into technical difficulties, and it's like stuck in limbo out there in tech world. So we decided, well, we'll just uh, kind of make an official one, I guess you could say, and put it on our YouTube channel. So we'll kind of always have it for people to reference back to. and. Um, I don't know, by virtue of just me wanting to know things and how they work, I've, I'm fairly knowledgeable in bits and um, one of the things you have to understand about bits is uh, the, com the parts of the bit and how, they, how each part works and why they work and we have videos explaining all of that that we've already videoed. But So this one is just more going to be about um, kind of my bits that are in my arsenal that I kind of my go-to's that I tend to use um, I have a lot of bits because you know you, you just never know when something might work that's really off the wall or out of the blue so I have a lot of bits but these these particular bits here seem to be the ones that I kind of migrate towards the most and fit my hands the best and so a lot of times that's what it is with bits is um, the bit has to fit the not just the horse, but more, mostly the rider's hands. And so that's, that's uh, why I have picked, I think these particular bits that I picked is because they seem to fit my hands the best. Um, I have, um, I ride, I have a real light hand. And so a lot of the bits um, that I like are gonna maybe um, have a little more shank to them than what most people would because I, I ride with a really light hand and I, have, and I try to have a really quick release. So I always want to use something that's also, that's going to have that quick release. Um, and then I'll get into why I pick uh, certain bits as, as I talk about them. But, um, you know, um, I guess a year or so ago, I kind of introduced Facebook to this uh, bit that I had found that I had been using for, for a while and really uh, was liking what it was doing in my training program as far as how it was making my horses feel. And so I figured out that the bit was made by J.D. Morrow and we named it the 1999 because when I sent the picture to J.D., he said that that was the last time that he had made that bit was in 1999. And so this one was the original one that I bought on a uh, bit auction for 20 bucks and he said, well, it was the stamp that he used on it that he said was a stamp that he hadn't used since 1999. So that's how the bit actually got the name 1999 is it's like, well, so if people are wanting to, to ask J, tell JD what bit they want, um, we wanted an easy way for them to be able to say what bit it was and him know exactly which one. So me and him agreed we would call it the 1999 and then when people, uh, said I want this bit, he would know exactly which one. And so this was how I started off with this, with this 1999 rigged up. Um, and I had actually got the idea from a, a cutting horse trainer, had a bit kind of similar to this that uh, I had used um, and really liked. And so I went on a quest to find one and I came across JD's bit. And so I just have a leather curb on this one not really even a curb it's it's just more of a stabilizer it keeps this shank from kicking too far forward or the bit having too much flop to it and so if if you really want to get a horse softened up in their in their rib cage then this i, I like this bit for that um, it's just a um, twisted wire snaffle mouthpiece um, without the curb if you need more lift then then you can get it with a curb chain and that's going to give you more lift than th this with, with the rope with the leather on there or just a piece of rope is going to give you a lot of lateral flexion when you add the curb chain to it you're going to you'll still get 
um, a decent amount of lateral flexion, but you're going to get more lift off of this with the curb set up on there than you would with just the, the leather strap on the back. And um, that one didn't have it, but mostly all of JD's bits come with bit guards and I just leave them, I just leave them on there. But um, I, I, really, I really do like JD Morrow as a bit maker. I think he's fair priced and I think he makes a really great product. So most of what you're gonna see hanging here are bits that I have had JD make for me. Um, and a lot of that is because um, it's a great quality and I like the fact that he makes all of his bits with a sweet iron mouthpiece. Horses tend to like that better. It helps um, a horse salivate, create uh, saliva in their mouth. And, and you might also get a little froth and that's not a bad thing. That just means that that horse's mouth is lubricated and, and really working the way that you want it to work. And so the, the sweet iron or a copper inlay will help a horse to have that uh, saliva, that moisture, that lubrication that they need in their, in their mouths to make it uh, viscous and make it work properly. And so the next um, bridles, I was introduced to uh, Petska by Kim, a friend of ours in Oklahoma named Kim Booth. And um, I tell you, it's kind of been a game changer for the, for the bell racing world to come across these Petska bits. And uh, when Kim first showed it to me, and then I, I was telling Molly Montgomery, you need a Petska. We, uh, we, this was the first Petska that we used. And there again, I mean, it just, it really does some things that no other bit can do. And I can't, I can't necessarily explain it or how it, this particular bridle works. I just know that it does work. And if you kind of need to get one's attention, but not scare them, then this Petska works really good for that. That ported mouthpiece gives some tongue relief. And the fact that it's um, on a chain, I think it gives it uh, more lateral flexion on the sides because the more breaks in a mouthpiece, the more, uh, the more flexion you're gonna get from side to side in the bit. And so this being on these chains gives this bit a good amount of lateral flexion from side to side. Um, when with this port in there, um, one bit maker said, if you want to get a horse's back feet up under them, touch the roof of their mouth. And so, um, this, and some horses it may, and some horses it may not. It depends on how much depth they have to the roof of their mouth. So anytime you're choosing a bit, you kind of need to be aware of the anatomy of your horse's mouth. Um, my bay colt, he's, he wants to be a little more tongue sensitive. So he'll draw his tongue back in his mouth if you get too much pressure on the tongue. And so I like to run him um, in stuff that gives this tongue relief. And that's, that's what a lot of these ports do is they give tongue relief to those horses so they can, they can kind of get their tongue, uh, you know, out of the way without drawing it back into their mouth. Because what will happen is if a horse learns the habit of sucking their tongue back in their mouth, they'll start to cut off their airway and then you'll begin to have breathing issues with those horses. So if I notice them doing that, then I try to not use bridles that I know is going to instigate that and c continue for that to be a problem. So with the port, they can't, they can't get their tongue over the bit, so they'll tend to keep it, you know, to want to keep it, keep it down, and that, that port will give them some tongue relief there. And then I also have this uh, Petska in a, shank, in a chain with, with this little shank. And for me, these, these two particular Petskas work really well with my hand. Um, I, I have had a longer shank one, um, but I, I really tend, to, this, is, this is the five inch shank and this is the shank that I tend to probably use the most. Um, if you, you know, you can make it, uh, draw it up in their mouth a little more or make it set down a little looser in their mouth and that'll change the feel of this bridle also because you're changing the points in the mouth that you hit on when you do that. And then this is an oldie but goodie right here. This bit has, this is probably one of the bits I think I've had since I've been training horses since, I mean, I started when I was 18 or so training horses and, and this particular bridle has been with me the entire time. I have not let this one out of my sight. Um, and there again, it's, I use it more for training than competing. And so I have the leather, the leather piece on here and that's kind of just to keep the bit stable and from kicking too far forward. 
you see it has a chain mouthpiece, so with all of these brakes, you're going to get a lot of lateral flexion. The fact that you have some shank length and some purchase length, you're still also going to get lift in this bridle. Um, but the, the, if I really want to get kind of get one softened up in their face, this, this is my go-to. Um, I think a chain gets a horse uh, pretty bendy and pretty soft. And you can um, booger the corners of their mouth with this bridle, so you need to pay attention and be a little careful with that. If you really get to um, pulling on this bridle, um, you will you will kind of rough the corners of their mouth up. Also, don't recommend bitting around in this particular bridle because you, you there again, it, it'll pinch them and they, you will kind of get those corners a little sore and some horses might need that, but some horses might get really offended by that. So just pay attention to that if you use this particular bridle, but it has its purposes and I do, I do use it and I do like it. Um, this is one I had JD make me. That is kind of his version of the simplicity, but I like the fact that it has a little bit of length below where the bit sits because sometimes um, you, with the simplicity, the trouble that I've had is that uh, it, it hangs up a little bit and it, this uh, slide doesn't, it doesn't slide very good and sometimes when it gets to the top of it, it'll hang right there and kind of bind those horses up and so I really like the way that JD has his set up and he's got um, a little raised part here that stops it from from you know going all the way up here to the to the headstall ring and all the way and it stops it from going all the way down to your rein ring. This particular one has a little bit of a square mouthpiece, and I like JD's square mouthpieces because they're just enough to get the horse's attention, but they're not so square that they're going to scare one. And and even with this this square mouthpiece. I've never had any trouble with this particular bridle um, roughing up the corners of a horse's mouth. And it's not scary. It, it's not scary to them either. And like on that, you can't, I don't know, you probably can't really see it, but on, this, on the side of the square that would sit next to the horse's mouth, he's just kind of smoothed that off just a little bit, just enough so that it's not going to cut that bar. But there's enough of an edge there that they will definitely feel that. And then, you know, kind of like everybody else, I'm a fan of these reverse gag bridles and um, a couple of mine are new because I've sold, sold them, but uh, they are the sweet iron mouthpiece that's going to rust. Um, I, I really like this one. It's got a cricket roller in it. And when, if you have a horse that wants to be nervous or kind of play with the bridle, this little roller right here, I don't know if you can hear that. But it kind of makes a little noise when they when they roll that with their tongue, and for a lot of horses that's very relaxing. For some reason, it's like a kid with a pacifier. They just kind of like to play with that and roll that that roller with their tongue. So if they uh, they're on my bay colt that kind of wants to be a little tongue sensitive, um, this three piece it, it's not going to put as much pressure across the bar as a as a two piece will. So you're going to get a, a, a slight amount of tongue relief, and then with this with this little roller there, then it it gives him kind of something to to play with, to um, kind of keep him from wanting to draw that his tongue back over the bridle. And so I have I have this reverse gag JD's reverse gag shank is slightly different from some of the other makers that I've seen. Um, it doesn't have quite as much gag, but to me, um, I have some gag bits, but I, like, I'm not a huge gag bit person, and so I like these ones that have a little bit less gag to them for competing. Um, you still get that quick release. One thing about this you'll see is that, the, that this, this bit moves forward on this uh, ring that's out here. That's why this is called a reverse gag because it's not, it's not gagging off of the shank of the bridle. This bridle is moving forward. As it as it moves up this per, that moves up the purchase of this bridle, so you get a, a little bit of relief tongue re, of release before if you keep pulling on this, then it'll it'll draw them down. And so I have this one and this three piece uh, mouthpiece with the cricket roller. Not and I ask I always ask specifically for a cricket roller. It's just my preference. I have this in this. Um, that has the, 
the uh, twisted snaffle on the sides and a chain in the middle. Um, some horses that that ch an actual chain will just have a little bit too much movement at the corners, but they but they kind of need the uh, breaks that a chain provides, and so I like this this mouthpiece for that for that reason. I do also have it in a full chain, and I also have it in just the regular two-piece uh, twisted wire. And there again, I really, I just really like the way that JD puts the the shanks on these bits, so there's just not quite as much gag to them. It that just fits my hands better, so I I just I stick with it. It works, so I stick with it. Um, when I got Phoebe, she was really funny about her face, and it took me a while to really feel like I got a bridle on her that she liked. And what Phoebe did not like was she did not like a bridle that moved at the corners of her mouth and her feel it. So I started using a Ed Wright pretzel on her, and as you can see, the the mouthpiece is fixed to this little tube right here, and so the the it sits smooth up against the horse's mouth. And so I had um, I had several uh, different mouthpieces of this made, and and actually when I started off with Phoebe, she was in. Um, a uh, shank similar to this, but it had this uh, three-piece with the copper roller in it. That's actually what I started running her in. And kind of as she got more uh, finished and a little bit stronger, I ended up with uh, the Ed Wright pretzel bit on her. And it gave her that tongue relief, and, but, and it also had that stability on the side so it didn't irritate her on the corners of her mouth. And she would just uh, bounce her head in the bridle um, she'd let you know for sure real quick if she did not like it. And so that's what got me started using this particular style of bridle. This one is uh, a Molly Powell rate and turn. Um, I think it's the level E. It's got, a, it's got quite a bit higher port in it, so it's got more port than what my Petska does. So if I have a horse that I really am wanting to work on break at the pole, then this that would be the reason that I would pick this particular bridle. I have, I'm not an O-ring person, but I do have a couple of them uh, that I like. This particular one is a Dutton, and it's just, it's a loose ring, O-ring, and it's got the sweet iron mouthpiece with the copper inlay. Um, you know, I, I, it's not something that I use a ton, but uh, occasionally I'll have a horse that um, doesn't really like a lot of shank, and so I'll, I'll kind of try this on them. I've actually never had a horse that I've ran in an O-ring. This is more of a just a training tool for me. Um, it, I don't know for running purposes. I have too soft of a hand, so an O-ring really doesn't doesn't fit my hands very well. Um, as far as combinations go, this is probably this is the only one that I use and that I like, and it's my mom's original Lynn McKenzie combination. Um, with the rope nose, you'll see this in, in all, all different variations now where the uh, nose is attached to the shank and, and all different kind of ways that this is set up. But for me and my hands, I, I, this, is about the, this is the only combination you really see me use. Um, everything works a little more independently. And so with this particular uh, combination, most of them, if if the nose band is on the shank, then the first thing when you enact this shank, that nose band is going to move forward, and you're going to have to get uh, pretty f far down into your pull before the horse is going to feel the nose band. With this particular one, the way that it's rigged up, um, it's kind of hard to see it j just hanging here, but the first action that you're going to get from this is curb pressure and nose pressure, and then they're going to start feeling the, the pressure of the bridle. So um, I've, I've had some horses, um, some of y'all may remember Rachel. Um, she, Rachel was really light in the face, but when I ran her, she kind of wanted to be strong. Well, if, if you had all the pressure at one particular spot, then it, it, it kind of scared her, or she would kind of brace on that more. And so what this combination does is it spreads those pressure points out, so they're feeling it in different places. You've got uh, some in the curb, some in the nose, and then some in the mouth. And I, I tend to always prefer 
just the chain mouthpiece in my combinations because I feel like um, in a combination it's kind of like a little bit like a hackamore there it's going to stiffen them up anyways and so I just prefer a, a chain mouthpiece with my combinations and um, actually on a combination I've never had it um, booger up the corners of a horse's mouth uh, one thing I will say about this is be sure to use a hobble on your shanks because if you pull out away from your horse's neck too much this shank will kick up and get them in a bind and so if you use if you do use this be sure that you put a, a bit hobble on it so that if you get your hand out too far that it won't flip up and pinch your horse because that will piss them off <laughs> um, I'm not a huge hackamore person but I do keep uh, one or two around that I will use occasionally and this is one that um, JD makes also and it is a DTE hack and I have really liked the feel of this particular hack I feel like um, Oddly enough, I, you can still get lateral flexion with this. Um, he makes two other ones for Ed Wright that I've also used and, and really like the feel of them. And then these two particular bridles, um, this is uh, no hit bit Jordan Briggs and it's got a square mouthpiece and not much shank to it. And um, y'all may or may not know Bigsby yet. She's my uh, three year old but I ain't seen nothing yet. And the thing that I, I've had two of them, and the thing that the two of them have both had in common is they're very, very light in the face. And, and also, um, they're, they're, they both want to be pretty bendy in their body. They're, 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 not, they're not stiff horses. Um, neither one of them are stiff horses. They want to be a little bit bendy, more bendy in their body. Um, my style is not necessarily a bendy, rappy style, so I like a little bit more stiffness in my horses. And so uh, Bixby, the way that she is built, it's very easy for her to, to drop her head over into the bridle, and she'll kind of have a tendency to want to get behind the bit a little bit. Well, with this, but with this particular bridle, I can kind of get that lift um, in the, from her chin to kind of elevate her nose a little bit more because I, I don't want them to, to tuck and hide their face when I engage the bridle. I want, I want to feel them kind of stay right on that bridle when I engage them. And so with this on, on Bixby, um, and I have one other horse that I like this on, I feel like that I can still get that lift that I want without over tucking them into the bridle. And I have this one hanging over here, not necessarily because it's one I use a ton, but I'm sure most of y'all know uh, the other Ain't Seen Nothing Yet, the Palomino mare that I ran, Hope. And this is one of the bridles that I compete on in her uh, some. And it's a clover. It's a clover bit with just a twisted wire snaffle. And there again, it, it's kind of that same, that same concept of it, it just won't over tuck her. She, she doesn't hide her face from it. She kind of stays right there in the bridle on it. It, from this, if I feel like that I need a little bit of a step up on her competing, I use this, oddly enough, I use this uh, with the, with the um, chain in the middle. It's, it's light and it's not abrasive to her. It's not too, it's not too abrupt. It has a nice even uh, pull to it. And so when, when you engage this, it, it acts a little bit more like a chain where it, um, you know, it, it just, it moves real flat across their mouth. You don't get that point or that peak that you get from a, from a snaffle and have that uh, kind of point up in the middle of their mouth. It moves across their mouth a little bit more like a chain would. And so it's not, it's not an abrupt feeling to them. And so, uh, but, but she's a little bit funny in her, the, about the corners of her mouth too. And she doesn't like a chain, so that was what made me uh, pick this bridle for her and probably every horse that comes to me I'll ride them with a tie down at some point and this particular tie down is my kind of my tie down of choice because I don't ever want a horse to get to where they're bracing on a tie down it's just a it's just a tool that I use to remind a horse to stay in collection when I touch their face um, I used this type of tie down on Phoebe. To this day, she still runs in one. Uh, Hope doesn't require one. Uh, she she won't 
she won't run into a tie down. So, and but she she kind of keeps her head and holds her collection. So I, I don't feel a strong need to put one on her. But if you see me using a tie down, this is going to be the tie down that I choose, and it's always a little bit loose. It's never tight. It's just that if they want to lift their face when I make that contact and they bump that little rope, it's just a reminder to them of hey, bring bring your head back down. Um, that that little rope, it's going to have it's going to have a little more bite to it than a leather tie down. Obviously, I think sometimes with the leather tie down, it'll dole them up and they'll really get to pushing into a leather tie down. And and there are horses that that their style kind of need they need that that leather tie down for balance. But um, like I said, if we're talking about preferences, then this is this is my preference of what I like to use. Um, I will use a brow band occasionally, and I just prefer the nylon brow band from L and W. I always be sure and put a chin strap on my brow bands because I don't want this sliding forward and getting into my horse's eyes when I compete. So I always be sure that I put a throat latch um, on my uh, brow bands when I use them so that I don't have to worry about it sliding down and getting in their eyes while I'm competing because I have had that happen and I have seen that happen. And so if you, if you do use a brow band or a bonnet, I do recommend that you put some type of, um, of chin strap on it. And I like mine where it's just above the eyes, kind of sitting on those eye bones. Um, I've seen it, p people adjust it all different kind of ways, but for, for my preference and the way that my hands work, I prefer to have it with just it sitting over, kind of right over those, their eyes on those eye bones a little bit. And then I'm just realizing there's one piece of equipment that I forgot to look. I am not a martingale person um, really at all, but um, I, th I think it was Molly that told me about this and the Uries have used this quite a bit and it's, it's the cowboy martingale and these snaps hook to your, I hook them to my, uh, where I, my girt uh, latigos go on my saddle and it goes around the front of the horse and you run your rein under this. Um, and this is the only type of, I guess, martingale that I use. And I, I do use this um, probably at least once a day on something. And um, it, this particular one is 52 inches from the base of the snap to the base of the snap if you're wanting to make one. Um, when you cut your string, leave some extra length so you can tie off your knots. And I just prefer snaps because it makes it quicker to put off and on a little easier. And so if I, this, this is really, occasionally I'll use draw reins, but I'm, there again, I'm not a huge fan of those because um, I feel like you could, that you can get a horse too inverted and too, too tucked. I, do have some and I do use them on occasion, but mine actually have knots in them so they can only draw to a certain point. But really this is about the only um, headset or type of tool that I'll use other than maybe my loose tie down or the, my uh, nylon bonnet. So that is kind of my bit collection. Um, like I said, as far as competing goes, um, it's probably gonna be uh, one of the reverse gags will tend to be what I compete in. I can use a pretzel with the way that my hands work. I have used uh, a, this combination with, with good success. Um, I actually have not competed in the 1990 bit, nine, 1999 bits. I kind of prefer them more as just a training aid. Um, I have not competed in um, ring bits. And I actually have not really competed in either one in, in Petska's and um, it's just maybe more of a personal preference. I just kind of prefer them as a training tool. Um, I tend to uh, use more bridle than I think I need when I train and less bridle than I probably need, would need when I run because I like to lighten up when I run. I think it'll help free them up a little bit. If you can kind of have that uh, bridle that you train in and then that bridle that you compete in, and once you put that bridle that you compete in on, then those horses begin to know, okay, it's time to get serious and focus on getting the job done. 
So I do kind of like to have um, a bridle that I train in and a bridle that I compete in. And sometimes I'll try to have a similarity between them. Like if I, if I want to compete on them with, uh, let's say my chain reverse gag, then my ride around bridle might be either um, this particular longer, a little bit longer shank type of gag or the chain Petska, kind of depending on what feel I'm wanting to get in them at that particular time. And so that's pretty much what I use. It's, I mean, I, like I said, I have a ton of bridles over there, but these seem to be the ones that I kind of always come back around to. So I hope this was informative to you. Be sure that you subscribe to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Share it so we can get, some, get our subscribers up and y'all just have a great week and <laughs> don't, don't go too star crazy with being confined. Get out there in the barn and um, take the knowledge that you've learned that all these great trainers are sharing and put it to practical use. Y'all have a great week.